Right. Uh, let's start the session. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on which time zone you're joining us from. And a warm welcome to each one of you. Thank you so much for taking your time to join this session. Uh, it's great to see you all here. Right. So um, we have a lot of people already uh, joining in. So yes, as I said, uh, the people we have already tested the chat option. So yes, um, thank you again uh, for joining this session. And uh, my name is Samia, and I have a pleasure of hosting this very special session. Um, and where our speaker, Anthony Joseph, who will walk with you uh, through this session. And we have planned this session uh, to be an engaging and fun. So keep sending in your comments or suggestions. And if you have any questions, please type uh, them in the chat uh, Q&A window so that we do not miss any questions and we will answer them for the sure at the end of the session. Right. Uh, so. Yes, uh, here's our speaker, uh, Mr. Anthony Joseph uh, Janish. Uh, he has 20 plus years of uh, rich experience in various uh, industries in handling uh, large scale product projects and um, have set up uh, and led PMO for a global leader in uh, publishing industry. Also, he has successfully trained and guided 5,000 uh, plus PMP aspirants uh, and trained global audiences from various industry uh, and uh, industry verticals in various uh, management domains. Um, and this is it uh, about Anthony. And uh, there's a very quick poll to understand the, uh, you know, um, participants familiarity. So let's, uh, let me launch a poll for you. It's a very basic poll. Yes, uh, here you go. So you have uh, your work experience. Uh, where are you from? And uh, did you attend a PMB certification training before? And you have you uh, previously attempted a, re a real PMB certification exam? Yes. So please take a moment to participate in the poll. Great. So, Anthony, we have 90% people here, audience here, who has more than 10 years of experience. And most of them are from India and US. And, okay, so many of them have completed their uh, um, TMP training. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And, uh, okay, most of them have not attended TMP certification. <laughs> Yes. That, that, that would be the reason that we have to ask with them. Yes, exactly. Right. And yes. So, yeah, Um. in spite of uh, people you know, uh, knowing about uh, the importance, uh, do you know that uh, there's a real gap between the number of people uh, who get uh, PMP trained and certification are greater than uh, the ones who actually attend uh, the exam and pass. This is the real fact, right? That also we saw in the poll, you know, 80%. Poll, exactly, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a very quick poll here. So this is just uh, um, to get to know about primary reason why people who receive PMP training uh, do not take the PMP exam. Let me launch the poll for you. Yes, you can answer the options here. Uh, so you have lack of time to prepare, cost of the exam, difficulty level of the exam, and uh, if you have any other reasons, please specify. So I guess most most of them have not attended the exam, so you will be knowing the reason exactly, right? Okay. So most of them see is uh, difficulty level of the exam. 30% see is uh, cost of the exam and 20% lack of time to prepare. And if you have any other reasons, you can specify in the chat option so that our uh, trainer will, uh, you know, speaker will get to know the reason there. 
All right. Thank you so much for participating in the poll. And yes, Anton, you have anything to tell? Um, yeah, you know, majority we see that, you know, uh, it is difficult, you know, the exam difficult level. Um, and that's, that's you know, our course is all of it, right? So we have that customized, you know, courses that makes them understand easy, you know, makes it easy uh, for them to clear the exam. So we will, you know, uh, we, we will be doing that. Okay, you know, so the other is... That. Yes. Uh, so other reason is uh, he has just completed the training. So uh, he's planning to appear in October. All right. Mm -hmm. This uh, would be very helpful for you. This session would be very helpful for you. Right? Okay. Then without any further delay, I'm handing over the session to you, Andy. Sure. Hey, everyone. Uh, welcome all. All right. So uh, we see that uh, uh, the majority from the poll, you know, they say that the difficulty level of the exam and the next would be a lack of time to prepare. Um, these are the challenges, you know, um, you know, the, the, the two points, you know, what I say is, you know, part of the challenges, what we are seeing here. Most of them, you know, do not have a plan about where to start, uh, you know, uh, the PMP certification. See, I did the uh, PMP certification sometimes in 2012, 11 years before. And, you know, at that time also I had the same problem. I do not know where to start. And even after a decade, I can see the same from uh, most of the participants, right? So um, where to start, you know, how to get started, you know, where, where to approach, whom needs to be approached, uh, you know, whom needs to be approached, uh, what are the guidelines, right? what are the reference materials so uh, there was a huge confusions about that different people will be telling about different strategies approaches um see it took me nearly one year for uh, appearing for the exam after completing my training because we had the same uh, problem we need to you know finally how i did the exam is uh, i finalized the time i fixed my date about you know when I have to take the exam that is second uh, January twenty twelve, and after I finalized my uh, exam uh, date, then I started preparing. It just took me a month to you know have it prepared and you know appear for the exam. So we can define a strategy and with knowledge that you know we uh, provide that uh, guidelines the one month study plan the sixty day study plan. You know, that will be helping the exam takers to uh, plan accordingly. You know, it will be helping them to uh, understand what level of effort they have to put in for various topics on preparing those topics, uh, practicing that so that, you know, they will be able to get to know better about the topics and make them uh, prepare or, you know, make them confident for uh, appearing for the exam. The lack of material. See, earlier, uh, till December 2020, uh, the uh, course materials were prepared by institutes. But now, PMI is preparing the course material, you know, based on which uh, the students, um, you know, exam taking, you know, the, the course material will be very much focusing on the exams perspective. Uh, most of you, you know, whoever has attended the training may be aware that the current examination will be focusing on the exam content outline. So PMI has come up with the course material, you know, since uh, uh, 2021, Jan 2021, PMI is preparing the course material. They also train the trainers on what they have to explain, you know, to what level a topic needs to be discussed. Uh, again, you know, that is aligned towards the exam. So they provide all the guidelines, right? Then I have a clear cut understanding on the PMI exam content outline. So as I said, the current examination is focusing on the exam content outline. And that focuses on three skills being demanded for a project manager. PMI is expecting a project manager uh, to be uh, balancing the skills of their leadership of the technical aspects and the business environment as well. So that is the focus is all about. So um, people or the you know uh, exam takers also not clear about you know how they have to approach a question. 
because the exam takers will be from different industries, right? Uh, some may be from manufacturing, some could be from telecom, some could be from software development. But in spite of those uh, differences, uh, you know, we are going to take a, a one common exam. The PMP exam is going to be a common exam. Uh, irrespective of the industry, the question is going to be very much common and very much appearing for, you know, any of the exam takers. So many times what people do is, you know, they will be trying to apply what they do uh, practically in their organization for a particular, uh, what is it, you know, for a particular question. But what is more um, required is, you know, how we are approaching that scenario, how we are approaching that a uh, process from PMI's perspective. So when, when we are applying our perspectives of, you know, what we are practicing in our uh, organization, that may not be the right answer. Knowing when you are ready. So one of the challenge is that, you know, having the confidence level, when I can uh, take up the exam, will I be able to take it and clear it in the first attempt? For that practice is very much important. And with knowledge that we have the uh, mock test. So after the training is completed, you know, we provide that mock test options, which will be making the participants to practice those mock tests, right? And uh, make them uh, uh, ready to take up the examination. And assistance with the PMP application process. One of the challenge the exam takers will be um, you know, phasing or thinking about us selecting an application for an audit. PMI randomly uh, chooses the application for an audit and the audit process, you know, they think is going to be, you know, uh, a, a longer um, activity to be completed. But there are certain, you know, keywords, certain approaches, you know, we can do on filling in the application where the chances of selecting the application for an audit, you know, could be less. But anyways, it is a, a random method or a random approach on selecting the application. So we can guide them on, you know, how to go through those uh, application filling process. You know, part of our training is on, uh, you know, showing e examples about how an application, you know, should be filled or what information uh, we should be providing in the application. So <clears throat> the participants, when they are able to follow up our strategies on um, understanding the course, understanding the study plan, and following our guidelines, it's going to be really you know, uh, useful and easy for them to approach the examination that I would like to share from you. Right, the eligibility requirements, uh, we see that uh, from the poll, most of um, the participants you know, here are already trained. So they are aware about the you know, uh, minimum eligibility requirements for anyone to take uh, uh, the PMP certification exam. But anyways, you know, let me reiterate that. You should, you know, if you're a degree holder, then you should be having 36 months of leading the projects, 36 months of the typical project management experiences. Out of you know that you should have gained in the recent eight years, right? In the recent eight years, you should have gained that 36 months, provided you are a degree holder, plus 35 hours of the project management education. Of or if your academic qualification is a high school diploma, then the minimum experience should be 60 months of the project management uh, experience plus 35 hours of the project management education. So this is mandatory. Yeah, we can move on to the next one. And here we see the, you know, a roadmap for the PMP certification. The step-by-step -step approaches for uh, preparing and, you know, getting certified. Step one to enroll in a PMP course. Now join a PMP session, understand what is being educated in the session. 
So here in Knowledge Club, we record all the sessions. So anytime later, you can watch those uh, videos of the recorded sessions. And the training will be covering up the exam content outline. Uh, in the exam content outline, there are 35 topics. And those 35 topics are being combined together into you know, um, 32 topics in the course material. And all those 32 topics we will be discussing uh, during our session. You know, focusing on the exam perspective. You know, what is more important for the exam? Where we have to focus on so that, you know, we would be explaining. And, you know, it will also be helping you to, you know, get at understand about the concepts from the PMBOK 6th edition, the 7th edition, the Agile practice guide as well. Because you may be aware that the current examination is not just focusing on the PMBOK. It is based on the exam content outline. That is a collection of best practices, which has information you know, carried from the PMBOK 6th edition, 7th edition, the Agile practice guide, and many other you know, materials being referred. So that would be the step one and step two. Then step three, after you completed the training, you can watch the videos, take the mock test. Assess where you are on the mock test. Focus on the chapters or on the topics where you would be requiring more uh, concentration or more understanding. Repeat taking the mock test. Practicing is really a good one. So the mock test will be helping you to understand why a particular option is correct, why the others are not correct. And for the correct answer, you know, you also get to know the justification, you know, explaining why it is the right one. So like that, you can do the practices. And when you are able to consistently score, you know, more than 80% in four mock tests, you can easily, you know, clear the PMP exam. So initially, it could be very difficult, but when you follow the procedures, the uh, guidelines, what we provide, it's going to be really easy for you. Take the exam. You know, there will be uh, 180 questions that needs to be answered in 230 minutes. And you may be aware that all those 180 questions are being split into three sections. Each of the section will be having 60 questions. And you have the option to take the exam either in a center or online. And there are procedures that you need to follow that's uh, made available in the um, uh, handbook, PMP handbook that you can get it downloaded from uh, the PMI website. That will be providing you the procedure, the check-in procedure you know, for the exam and what you have to do, what you shouldn't do, what are the uh, you know, ID uh, proofs that we can uh, uh, you know, use for uh, verifying, right? And all those procedures we will be explaining. You take the exam, you clear the exam, and you, know, you get your PMP certificate. You can also download your PMP certificate you know, from the PMI dashboard. And you may be aware that your certification is valid for a period of three years. And every three years, you have to submit 60 PDUs and pay the renewal fee. If you fail to you know, do any of those things, you know, your credential gets suspended at the starting of the fourth year. But at least at that fourth year, you have to uh, submit the remaining PDUs and pay the renewal fee. Otherwise, at the fifth year, it can expire. After that, you cannot uh, claim back your credentials. So it would be better that you maintain your certification every three years by recording those 60 PDUs and uh, pay the renewal fee. Right, so um, the examination, the exam content outline, as I said, it focuses on something called the PMI talent triangle. This is what PMI is expecting, the minimum skill and how a project manager needs to balance the skill between the leadership's 
you know, our leadership skills. That is the power skill, otherwise the leadership skills. The technical project management skills, that's the way of working. And the strategic and the business management skill related to the business acumen. As a project manager, we are going to deal with many stakeholders, customers, vendors, our team members, stakeholders internal to the organization, external to our organization, like government bodies, regulatory institutes, how we are able to you know, influence them, get their buy-in into the project and make the project a successfully completed one. Why that leadership skills are very much important is that, see, we are working in a project and we want to uh, successfully complete that project. Let's say there is a project we are working and uh, in that project, the, all the objectives were met, but the stakeholders are not happy with the way the project is being executed or with the way the product is performing. In this case, we cannot say the project is successfully completed. Maybe in another project, there could be missed timelines, there could be cost overruns, but still our customers are happy with the product, how it is being performing. They give us more business. So there we can say the project is successfully completed. So the successful completion depends upon how the stakeholders are satisfied. And how we can make the stakeholders satisfied is by actively engaging them in our project. And that can, that can be you know, ensured uh, through our leadership skills, making different stakeholders, you know, actively engaging them in our project based on their needs, their expectations. Then the ways of working, the technical aspects, defining you know, the way of working or creating a workflow that is specific for that project context, selecting the right approaches, you know, whether this particular project or this particular product development should be happening in a predictive approach or in an adaptive approach or in a hybrid approach. What are the phases that we need to consider? What are the processes? What are the activities, tasks we have to consider so that the project can be effectively completed, will be focusing on the ways of working. On the business acumen or on the strategic and the business management skills, as a project manager, we should be understanding the strategic goals of our organization. See, any organization will have a vision, mission, and the strategic objectives. The successful completion of a project will be you know, helping the organization to enhance meeting the strategic goals. So that is the reason a PMI is expecting a project manager you know, to balance on all those three skills, not just focusing on one of the skills. So the exam is also focusing on assessing those three skills. The power skills, that is the leadership skills, around 42% of the question will be based on the power skills or the people domain. That helps us to make sure a project is uh, efficiently uh, completed. Then the ways of working, the process domain, 50% of the questions will be from the process domain. That ensures the project is effectively completed. And 8% of our questions will be based on the business environment. How the project is meeting the strategic goals of the organization. And this is the examination blueprint. People, 42%, process, 50%, and the business environment, 8%. Yeah, if you if any of you have any questions, you can you know put that in the chat box and we can explain that. Sample knowledge curve, mock exam questions. You know, the mock test that uh, we have created for knowledge curve will be based on you know the PMI's expectation. In the PMP examination, you can have different types of questions. 
it could be situational or scenario based you will be provided with a, a, a scenario you need to assume you are a project manager and assuming you are a project manager and following the guidelines of the pmi you know expectation you have to approach that particular situation and select the right option questions that may be following a process maybe like the terms or the definitions or what comes next after a particular activity or a particular process questions can be you know in that way this is to um, you know make us understand you know how we are able to follow certain procedures or processes extraneous information some questions will be having irrelevant information when we are reading the question we should be able to understand what the question is actually asking about what it is not actually concerned about there will be stories appearing in the question and finally there will be a statement that one statement could be the actual question the rest of the 10 lines may be there everything is a story that is deviating us from uh, that particular situation so we have to be aware about that made up terms so they are the questions like you know uh, asking you to explain about certain terms understanding the terms you know direct questions about the terms and definitions multiple choices and hot hotspot questions can also be there like selecting a particular point maybe in a graph that represents the answer for a you know particular uh, situation that is being provided so questions could be like match the following fill in the blanks mcqs multi-choice questions or multiple choices and hotspot questions as well so all those kind of questions you know you have you know mock test so practicing that will be helping you to you know align yourselves towards the uh, pmis exam uh, you know question patterns can go on to the next Yeah. So how we have to approach the question in the examination. A project manager should always evaluate first before an action to be taken. There is a situation provided. First, you analyze the situation, understand it. Then you take an action. Not that we take an action immediately and then we assess how that action is uh, you know, getting performed. First, assess the situation, then you take the action. If there are any problems or issues or conflicts, resolve that immediately. Don't wait. Don't think that we can, you know, resolve it later. So when you're approaching a question, you have to, you know, uh, keep that in mind. If the question is related to a particular problem, or addressing a concern, you have to resolve that first, you know, not postpone it. Maintain a servant leader attitude or the principles. Even though the servant leader, you know, the concept is out of the scrum, you know, the servant leadership approaches or the servant leadership style, you know, uh, is better to be practiced by a project manager. And we know that, you know, what servant leadership is all about providing the required support to the team, then monitoring their performances, creating an environment, providing all the support and resources to the team so that they will be able to get the project completed in a better way, then monitoring them. So that approach we should be um, following. More than directing, servant leadership is very much uh, important. So questions should also be approached in that way. Understand whether the question is, um, you know, um, focusing on what type of the project management approach, whether it is referring to a predictive approach or a waterfall traditional or an adaptive or the agile or a hybrid approach. Because based on the approaches, there will be differences on a role, right? And accordingly, you have to approach the questions. The project manager puts the interest of a project ahead of their own self-interest. 
one of the responsibility for a project manager is to make sure the project is successfully completed. Whatever be the challenges, we should take all the measures to make sure the project is moving ahead, making sure the objectives will be met. Overcome all those challenges. The project manager protects the project from any unnecessary changes. When we say unnecessary changes, it doesn't mean that you know, changes need to be restricted. Changes are welcome, but it has to be implemented in a controlled manner. Even though a project manager will be having some level of tolerances of accepting a change, make sure it is being implemented in a procedurized way. Not you know, just we receive a change and we implement it. So in questions in the PMP exam, there may be a situation, a customer is asking you to implement a change request immediately. You know, whether you will be Im Im implementing it immediately or what would be the best approach you have to follow, you need to select the right option. Then choose the best answer that matches PMIism. As I said earlier, you know, most of us select an answer based on our experience maybe in the current organization or in our previous you know, organizations. What we practically do, what we have practically experienced, that's what we would be selecting, but that may not be uh, meeting the PMI's expectation. You have to approach the question based on the expectation of Project Management Institute, because they prepare the guidelines. They assess many projects, many best practices. So when we are selecting an option, make sure that we are selecting the best approach or the best practices as being expected by PMI. We can move to the next. Right, so understanding all these, you know, uh, let's quickly do some, um, you know, uh, challenges, a sample mock test. There are three sections. Each of the section will be having some four sample questions and you can, you know, uh, select the correct answer for that. I think it would be in a poll format. Yes. Somia, right? Yes, Anthony. Uh, so for each of the question, I'll be launching the poll. You can choose your uh, options from the poll, right? So good. Yeah. So the first one, the people, that's the leadership skills based on. And here's your first question. You can read the question, read the options, and select which is the right one. Oh, yeah. yes, Anthony, if you can read out the questions for them. Yeah, OK, I'll do that. Your employee is three days late in a report. Five minutes before the meeting, where the topic of the report is to be discussed, she hands you the report. And as a project manager, you notice there are some serious errors in it. How you should be responding to that situation? What should you do? The options are you cancel the meeting and reschedule when the report is fixed, or go to the meeting and tell the other attendees there are errors in the report, or force the employee to do the presentation and remain silent as the other attendees, they find the errors. Or option D, cancel the meeting and rewrite the report yourself. And we see that uh, people are responding to that question. Yes. Uh, then of uh, you know uh, responding your answers in the chat box, it would be better you put it in the poll. Right. So yeah, fifty five um percent have said A, thirty six percent mm -hmm. B, and nine percent D. So let me end yes. up here, and we'll check the right answer. Correct. Yeah, we'll do. It. Yes, option A, cancel the meeting and reschedule when the report is fixed. So in this question, you know, we should also be focusing on the ethics. Ethically, what is the correct approach? If you see some of the options, can you move back to the slide? Yes. The yes. question, Samir? Sure. 
Yes, can you the previous. See so here, certain options like you know forcing the employee to do the presentation. That's not a right approach. And you know going ahead with a meeting, even though there are mistakes. You know why we have to do the meeting. So just sometimes before we you know learnt about that, any issues we have to fix that immediately, right? Then of uh, planning it to be resolved later. So. That's how you know we have to approach the question. So the correct answer is cancel the meeting and reschedule when the report is fixed. Yes. Uh, right. To move on to the next question. Sure. A project manager assembled the project team, identified 56 risks on the project, determined what would trigger the risk, rated them on the risk rating matrix, Tested their assumption, assess the quality of the data that has been used. The team is continuing to move through the risk management process. What has the project manager forgotten to do? So this is all about the question related to understanding the procedure or the process that has to be followed. So you can open the poll. Option A, simulation, or option B, risk mitigation. Option C, overall risk rating, uh, sorry, ranking for the projects, and D, involvement of other stakeholders. We can hold on for the slide before we move to the answer, Sonia. All right, yeah. We are waiting for former participants to respond. Yes. In the poll, yeah. So those who have res haven't responded, please do that. All right, uh, let's end the poll here. So hope uh, mm -hmm. you have got the answers, Anthony. Yeah, so the majority says options B, option B, risk mitigation. The risk mitigation is a activity or a process that we do, you know, after prioritizing the risk. But here, you know, one of the important activity that we have forgot is to involve the stakeholders in a project, to get to know what is their perspective, their attitude, their attitude about the risk. Only based on understanding their perspective, we can even plan for a risk mitigation because one stakeholder, they may be able to accept a risk, 50% risk. Yes, the stakeholder says, I'm fine with that. Appropriately, you would be able to take an action. So yeah, move on to the uh, answer yes. slide. The correct answer is involve the stakeholders. Get to know their perspective. Okay, so no worries. You know, even if your answers are not correct, uh, it's all about the practice, right? Practice makes everyone perfect. So we can move to the next question. Sure. Yeah. The question is: the software development lifecycle begins with a proof of concept and progresses into the build, test, and acceptance phases. Sometimes differences between the stakeholders can develop into conflict, which is going to have an impact to the customer. As a trained project, uh, yeah, professional project manager, how do you handle this situation and resolve the customer's concern? Option A, let the customer went and take the notes. B, schedule a meeting. C, develop a change request for the customer. And D, resolve the matter in favor of the customer. The poll is open.
30 more seconds. Mm -hmm. All right, um, I think we can end the poll here. Yeah? Yeah. Sure. So uh, schedule a meeting is the option most of uh, the participants have selected. Yeah. So let's let's read the question. The software development lifecycle begins with a proof of concept and progresses into the build, test, and accept, acceptance phase. So it is moving forward. Sometimes differences between stakeholders can develop into a conflict. Let's say two of your team members are, are having a conflict about a particular requirement. So when they are not going to do that requirement, that's going to have an impact on the customer. How those uh, conflicts you know, should be resolved, whatever be the conflict, end of the day, it has to be resolved favoring the customer because the customer has authorized the project. They have approved the project and they have the certain expectation, the requirements being built in or you know, being requested. So, um, scheduling meeting is an activity that you would be doing, but the question is actually asking, how do you handle the situation? Means, you know, how are we going to resolve, you know, the situation uh, addressing the customer's concern? So any problem or any conflict or any issues, whatever the problem in a project, make sure it has to be resolved in favor of the customer. End of the day, the customer needs to be satisfied. So you cannot take a decision which is not aligning towards the customer's expectation. So option D, resolve the matter in favor of the customer. That would be the correct answer. And we see 18% you know, has uh, uh, given that answer. No worries. So let's see one more question yeah. from the people, Jamai. Here we go. There are numerous milestones that John, an aspiring PMP, wants to incorporate into uh, his project, but he doesn't know uh, how to differentiate among all of the tasks. He realizes that the first meeting of the stakeholders and the team member is a key element to the positive start of a project. Whether an in-person meeting or a virtual meeting, this initial gathering provides an opportunity to clarify the roles, ask questions, and do the knowledge transfer. What is this meeting called us? The meeting that you would be conducting to get to know uh, the roles, clarify the roles, ask questions with customers, and also do the knowledge transfer activity. Option A, it's a team meeting. Option B, an ad hoc meeting, option C, a kickoff meeting, option D, a project review. Four more to respond. And we have 20, 30, so the time is incremental. Yes. All right, um, so I think we can end the poll here. Right. And we see that 91% uh, of the participants says option C, a kickoff meeting, and that's the correct answer. So in the a project management context, there is no meeting called a, an ad hoc meeting. It's a kickoff meeting or a project launch meeting. So that is the meeting, you know, that will be helping to have an introduction, you know, between the customers and the team members, um, have a clarity on their roles, ask about the, you know, projects, uh, expectations, requirements, all these will be done during the project kickoff meeting. I really appreciate most of you have, you know, got it right. So, so you know, on. this is how you can, yeah. So yes. these are, you know, some of the examples for uh, the questions related to the people domain. Now let's, you know, do the assessment. Again, a four questions on the process. 
small one? No. Process, the first question is, in a car manufacturing industry, because of their unique skills, some key resources do multitasking and support more than one activity at a time in different projects. So, a project manager must take their productivity into account when approximating the number of work periods for an activity. And here is the key word you can understand when approximating the number of work periods for an activity. Sometimes the project manager is required to apply more than one resource to one activity to quickly complete that activity. Also, he must take into account that some of the resources will be working only part-time every day. Many of such factors must be considered while, or you know, the question is asking, when we are performing, which of the uh, process we have, we are going to do all these uh, activities, all these you know uh, tasks. Is it when we are creating a work breakdown structure or creating a project management plan or while we are defining the activities for the project or when we are estimating the activity durations? Okay, so I think uh, we can end the poll here. Yeah, right. We see that most of the responses were for option D, estimating activity durations. If you remember, I said that you have to be aware about the keyword, you know, when approximating the number of work periods for an activity. So what is that exactly? The number of work periods is nothing but the duration that we are preparing for that activity. So the correct answer is option D, estimating the activity durations. As a project manager, when we are estimating the activity durations, we are you know, performing all these activities, understanding you know, how long the person is going to work, you know, uh, whether the person will be working part-time or a full-time, right? So that option D is the correct answer. Can display the answer, please. Yes, estimating the activity durations. Right. The next question. Yeah. The plant value, earned value, and the actual cost in a manufacturing project has identical values during execution. Which of the following statements describes the status of the project? The cost variance and the schedule variance values are positive. The cost performance index and the schedule performance index values are zero. The project is behind the schedule and over budget. The project is on schedule and on budget. Which of the option, option is the correct one? You know, we uh, understood that, you know, most of you have undergone the PMP training. So uh, earned value, plant value is something you are already aware of. So we can select the correct answer. Right, um, I think uh, we can end the poll here. Right. The majority of the responses are for option D. So let's understand this question. What is this question asking about? Or uh, it says that the plant value, the PB, 
the earned value, the EV, and the actual cost, AC, all has the same value, PV equals EV equals AC. When we want to determine the scheduled performances of the project, we have to compare the planned value and the earned value. When we want to determine the cost performances of the project, we compare the planned value and the actual cost. So here, the planned value is equal to the earned value, which means whatever you have completed so far, uh, uh, you know, within a particular point of time, you have completed certain activities, a certain value of the activities, and that equates to what you have actually planned for it. So your schedule uh, is, you know, as per the plan, that is your on schedule. And on the actual cost, you know, when your earned value and the actual cost, you know, when both are same, right? It means that you have your you are spending what you are actually planned to spend. Means you know, planned value is equal to your earned value, and the actual cost will be based on the earned value, but it is you know equal. Both are equal. Means we are on the budget as well. So the correct option, as 73% of them say, it is option D. The project is on schedule and on budget. Yes. So can you show the answer? Yeah, that's the one. Because all the three values are equal. All right. The third question, please. Yes. Yeah. Due to funding related issues, both the buyer and seller have reached a collective agreement and agreed to end the contract in an IT project. Ending a contract using a collective agreement is done during which of the process? So this is something related to the PMBOK 6th edition, but anyways, that is also considered in your exam content outline. Typically asking the name of the process where you would be ending a contract using collective agreement. Is it the process name called close agreement process or control agreement pro procurement process or close project process or close contract process? Six more to respond. I... Yes. Right. <clears throat> Let's end the poll here. Okay. Right. In the PM Box sixth edition, uh, related to procurement management, there are three processes: plan procurement manage procurement and control procurement. So control procurement is the process where, you know, the contract closures will be happening. So the correct option is option B, control procurement process. Yes. So it is directly asking about, you know, what the what is the name of that process? So we should be aware about that. Let's see one more question from uh, the people, Jomai. Sure, yeah. You are using control charts to perform quality control. So this question is related to quality management. Which of these situation does not indicate that the process is out of control and an assignable cause needs to be assigned? Assume that the control limits have been set to three sigma. You may be aware that in a control chart, the attributes will be like, you know, you have a mean, you have an upper control limit set at mean plus three standard deviation and a, a, a lower control limit set at mean minus three standard deviation. So this is the question asking, which of the below uh, situation out of these four options, you know, which of the option, you know, does not indicate that the process is out of control means the process is in control. Which of the statement indicates that the process is in the control? Option A, 
One of the point is more than the mean plus three standard deviation or mean plus three sigma. Two points together are more than mean plus two sigma, but less than mean minus three sigma. C, seven points together are on one side of the mean. Option D, all the points are within the control limits. So out of these four options, which of the option you know, says that your process is typically in control. Yes, um, I think we can end the poll here. So, okay. Yes. Right. Um, majority of them say option D, all points are within the control limits. If you look into a control chart, if any of you are from the quality function, if you look into a control chart, you know, you know, as an auditor, you know, I'm a, a auditor for quality management systems. When we go for an audit, uh, most specifically for automotives and aerospace, you know, uh, we would be measuring and monitoring their SPC, the statistical process control, where they would be using the control chart. One of the first observation, what we do is, do they have a straight line performance? When I say straight line performance, you know, all the data points, will be within the control limit, but it would be in a straight line. It says the process is not in control. You cannot have a straight line performances. Whatever process you take, there will be variations. So option D, all points within the control limit, doesn't mean the process is in control. If you have a straight line performance, or even option C says, you know, seven points to gather on one side of the mean. And that is called the rule of seven, having seven consecutive data points on one side of the mean. You may have all the data points within the control limit, but still option C is also, you know, says that the process is not, not in control. Option A, I think, you know, all of you are clear. One of the point is more than mean plus three standard deviation, it is out of the control limit. So what or which of these statements says the process is within control is option B. Two points to gather are more than mean plus two sigma, but less than mean, mean plus three sigma. That is, it is between um, you know a two sigma and three sigma value. It is more than two sigma plus it is within uh, the three sigma. So option B, that is the correct answer. It is between that data point. The, those two data points are between, you know, a two sigma and the three sigma value. So option D is not the right answer. Even though all the data points are within the control limit, it doesn't mean the process is in control. So this is how, you know, we should be uh, aware about the topics, you know, just by seeing that option. You know, in fact, I also thought that, you know, most of you are going to answer or select that option D as the answer, and that was the true one. So we need to understand what it is all about. And, you know, all these are part of your, uh, you know, courses, you know, understanding the control chart, various other quality control tools, right? Yeah, so uh, these are, you know, some questions related to the process domain. Now let's see some sample questions from the business environment. Four sample questions. The question one is, for a solar energy park development project, the budget has been finalized by considering the subsidy, the subsidy, subsidy you know, available from the government. However, during the build stage of the project, it has been notified that due to specific clause in the subsidy policy, this project is not eligible for the expected subsidy. What is the next immediate step 
that's the keyword next immediate step to be taken by the project manager should a project manager raise a change request to revise the project cost baseline or recommend for termination of the project as it cannot be completed without receipt of the subsidy or log it as an issue in the issue log and schedule a meeting with the key stakeholders or raise a change request to reduce the scope of the project to fit within the available funds. Which of the option is the next immediate step that a project manager needs to do based on that particular situation? And your poll starts. We see there is a tie between option A and C. Okay, now A C is getting a lead. Okay, that's uh, in the poll here. Right. Majority says option C, log it as an issue uh, in the issue log and schedule a meeting. and. The second option, uh, what the people have selected is raise a change request to revise the project cost baseline. So when you can submit a change request, when the team, when the stakeholders agrees for it, what if you submit a change request and they say that, okay, let's stop the project. Let's not continue to do or continue to you know, proceed with the project. There will be no further advancements, right? So the question is asking, Based on the situation, what would be the next immediate step you are going to take? So the first step, what we have to do is log that as an issue because um, not going to have the subsidy is going to be an issue. It's a problem in that particular project. So register that in the issue log, conduct a meeting with the stakeholders. If the stakeholders says that, okay, let's continue, then you submit a change request. So the correct answer is option C, log that as a issue in, a, in, the, in the issue log. Can we move on to the next question? A few days after the issue of a project charter, the business analyst informs the project manager that a new regulation by the local government may impact the financial viability of the project. What should the immediate action by the project manager? Again, the question is like, you know, what should be the immediate action to be taken by the project manager? Should it be informing the sponsor to cancel or terminate the project or go ahead with planning activities as the project has been authorized and the charter is issued or update the risk register with a new risk that has been identified or gather more details about the regulation and present your findings to the sponsor and key stakeholders, which is the best or the immediate, not the best, the immediate action that needs to be done uh, as a project manager. The project is just initiated when we say you know, uh, the charter has been provided, just has been initiated. We are not much into the project. We just started it. Yeah, so I think... Uh... We can end the poll. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. The most of the options uh, respondents are on option C. Update the risk register with a new 
risk that has been identified. But how we will be getting to know about the risk associated with that, uh, you know, uh, changes on the regulation or based on the new regulation? Only when after we gather more information about that, without knowing what is that regulation, without discussing with the sponsors, we do not know what are the risks related to that regulation, whether it is going to be a you know risk or not, whether it is going to uh, bring us the opportunities or the threats. We will be able to get to know only after you know we understand what that regulation is all about. Without knowing certain things, we cannot assume you know, about the risks. So the correct answer for this question is option D, gather more details about the regulation and present your findings to the sponsor and the key stakeholders. So that is the correct answer. Okay, yes. The next question. Right. You have been identified as a project manager for a strat strategic opportunity that has been recently approved. The project, project charter is yet to be issued, not at issue. You have been provided with information on the high level scope, the key milestones and the overall risk of the proposed project. What other key documents or information should you re review at this stage? It is at the very beginning stage of the project. The charter is not at being issued. You have the high level information. Then out of the below options, what are the other documents or information you should be reviewing? Should it be option A, scope, schedule, and cost baselines? Or should it be option B, the project management plan templates and lessons learned from previous projects? Or option C, the reason for selecting this project, the business case, and information about key stakeholders, or option D, the project management software and the knowledge repositories that should be used for managing the project. Again, understand the situation. It is at the very beginning stage. Even the charter is not yet finalized. So what should be the correct option? Yeah. Right. And we see the options on B, C, and D, and the majority is on option C, 67% on option C, and that's the correct answer. Why it is not option B, as you may think, is the project management plan is something that we will be creating after the charter is created. Uh, can you go back to the question, please? Right, so option B is not the right answer. Why option D is not the right answer? Because the selection of the project management software, knowledge repositories would be happening while you are creating or while after the project management plan is being finalized. But as I said, this is the very beginning stage of the project. At the initial stages, even the charter is not yet finalized. So as a project manager, you know we need to review the business case that would be having some high level information about the project purpose its justification why the project has been selected is it worth investing right so such information you can get to know from the business case and also any vital information from the key stakeholders so that is the correct answer option c as many of you have said that that's the uh, correct option and that would be the activity that as a project manager we would be doing even before the charter is being prepared let's go with one more question yes yeah the project team is working on upgrading to a banking software 
One of the key constraints on the project is the high level of data security required. The project team should also ensure compliance requirements related to the banking data security. How should this requirement be taken care of? What requirement? The banking data security requirement. How it has to be uh, taken care of? Should it be based on option A, that is outsource the project to a banking technology specialist organization, or B, inform the stakeholders that the team will do its best and they would not be accountable for any security breaches. Option C, organize more frequent unscheduled security audits and check for compliance failures, if any. Or option D, develop data security policies and standards to be followed by the project team. Create awareness on those policies and standards and ensure compliances. Which of the option you know, should be taken care of? Okay, let's uh, end the poll. Right, so here we see um, responses to three options, A, C, and D. A, outsource the project to a banking technology specialist organization. That is not a correct answer. That could be an option, but out of those four options, that may not be the first uh, option that we do. That may be following another option. We will say what that option is all about. Option C, organize more frequent unscheduled security audits and check for compliance failures, if any. Again, that can also be done, but that is also not the right answer because it follows developing data security policies and standards to be followed by the project team. Create awareness on the policies and standards and ensure compliances. So based on how you're going to ensure the compliance, you know, you can um, organize more frequent unscheduled uh, security audits. Based on the policies, based on the standards, you can decide whether you can outsource or not. So you may think option A or C is right, but the predecessor for that would be option D. And most of you have selected option D, and that's the correct answer. Develop the data security policies and standards that needs to be followed. Right, so this is how you can see you know, questions in your exam. That will be helping you to understand, uh, you know, the mock test will be helping you to understand why um, a particular option is right, why the others are not correct. And this is how you know you may also be having questions in the PMP exam, and you have to you know do your approaches in the right way. Understand the order. You know in the previous question I said that you know uh, understand you know how the uh, orders needs to be you know followed. Okay, so that's all about the you know questions, the sample questions. Any questions you would like to ask? Yes, uh, so do you have any questions for Anthony? You can ask right now. The floor is open for you. You can text them in the Q&A window. We will pick it up from there. Else if you want directly to talk to, okay, Arvind, let me allow you to talk. Yes, Arvind, do you have anything to ask? Yes, my question is uh, about uh, these things uh, the, uh, related to the complete uh, mock test and the simulation test which has been given in the uh, knowledge chart. Is it all related to the latest uh, syllabus like uh, ICO and uh, uh, the ICO, uh, is it related to exactly ICO or is also uh, uh, linked with the previous uh, Filmbox 6 as well? 
See, the exam content outline, you know, uh, will be, uh, as I said earlier, will be a combination of the PM Box 6th edition, 7th edition, Agile practice guide, and, you know, many other references as well. So your mock test will also be based on that. It is a mix of, you know, multiple questions, but typically, you know, to uh, give you a, a straightforward answer, it is yes, based on the exam content outline. Thank you. And... Uh... Uh, so it is more relevant to the, uh, so it, it, is it not like uh, the questions where, uh, uh, how I can say, uh, okay, the, uh, the the latest exams, whatever is happening, it is more relevant. The, the questions is also revised based on that, right? If I'm not wrong. In the, all the mock tests and the, uh, uh, the, uh, the simulation tests. Uh, so I think there are two options, right? And a sim mock test is separate and a, a simulation is a yes, separate. Yes, both are separate. Yeah. Yeah. So which one will have the I mean the latest uh, uh, updates basically? The I I feel like uh, the knowledge that uh, they keep on update the uh, these things uh, the questions based on the uh, inbox event, right? So uh, it is uh, so close relevant to the. Uh, the 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 test which will uh, we will appear uh, practically, right? It is. It is. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 The the current examination. I mean, the mock test and the simulation. You know, is based on the current exam uh, pattern. Yeah. So the intention of asking is this. Uh, so I no need to take up uh, any additional. Uh, I mean, uh, third vendor. Uh, kind of a questions, set of questions from them uh, to prepare this again, right? So it includes all. Yes, there is no needed for you know uh, looking for a third uh, party you know exam uh, simulations. You can uh, just you know make use of the mock test and the simulated exam. That should be fine. Thank you. So but much. the other option is you know up to you. If you still want to have more practices, you know you can uh, go for it. But you know, we can say that, you know, what is available with knowledge cut with that uh, repository is, you know, well and good. Thank you so much. That's sure, good. Arvind. Yes, thank you, Arvind. And we have one question uh, on the chat. So, Karishma is asking, how can we get support with writing a good application? Okay, for the application, you know, uh, during the training, for example, when I do the trainings, um, on the very first day, as a part of the session, you know, I will be showing you an example about how a filled up application will be looking like. What information we have to, you know, provide in that application. And the guidelines, you know, or whatever uh, you have to do, what you need to do when, in, when your application is being selected for an audit. And if you want to have assistance on that, you know, Maybe uh, you can uh, check with knowledge here. Uh, at that time, you know, who may be your course coordinator. So they will be assigning an SME, you know, for uh, validating if your application is good enough to be submitted to PMN. So that support uh, can be provided. I hope that answers. Yes, Karishma's thank question. you, Karishma, uh, for the question. And we have a one question from Sujit. Says, uh, what is the pass percentage in PMP exam uh, for the year uh, 2023? Um, Sujit, actually, there is no percentages, you know, not known to anyone. It is highly confidential. Uh, you may hear some numbers from uh, different people, but they are not authentic. You know, whatever we get it from PMI, you know, should be considered, but PMI doesn't reveal, you know, that information. So the first percentage, no one knows about that. You have to, you know, put a good amount of effort for all the 180 questions. Understand the concepts and uh, put a good effort for all the 180 questions. Okay. Yes, uh, thank you, Anthony, for the answer. Uh, any more questions? Yeah, uh, my aunt is asking, can you give some idea how much person, person should be cut off for passing P uh, PMP? Again, it is the continuation of the same question. Actually, no, you know, no one knows the percentage. You know, some may say 68, some may say 52, but there is no concrete information, no authentic information from PMI 
because each of the question carries a weightage and we do not know what is the weightage given to each of the question. But I can say there will be no negative scoring. If it is correct, it is right. If it is not, it is not right and no negative scoring. So no one knows what is the pass percentage or what percentage we have to get to pass the exam. And all the three domains you have to pass. Okay. Um, yes, thank you, ma'am. Uh, for the question. Uh, my hand says thank you. Uh, thank you, Anthony, for the answer. And any more questions we have for today? A couple of, a couple of more seconds for the questions to come in. If not, I think, yeah, there is a thing. So we know this asking. Yes, there are can there... be, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I saw the question. We know the, are there any matching type questions? Yes, there can be. As I said, the questions will be like multi-choice, multiple choices. Uh, match the following, fill in the blanks, and hotspot questions. I hope I that hope answers that we know. Yeah, yeah we know. thank you for the question. Anyone else? I think Hima Sileja also raised uh, her hands so sometimes before. Any question? Hima Sileja, okay. Yeah, do you have anything to talk, uh, ask, Hima? I've allowed no, no, no. Sorry, that's by mistake. I don't know. Yeah, no, no problem. Very really informative uh, uh, session. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Hima. All right, so any other questions? I think we have. A... Yes. Good night. Is there a way, is there any way to get through this? Yes, you know, we have the structures being defined like 60 days work plan, um, 90 days work plan. So you can follow that and you will be able to, you know, uh, easily get this examination clear, which includes our, you know, the training uh, timelines as well. Yes, um, so Karisma is asking, do do we have any more planned sessions like the one today? Yes, Karishma, we are planning the same sessions in the month of September also. So please do visit our Knowledge Art website on the masterclass section. You will find uh, the, uh, the those um, sessions will be published um, by end of this uh, next week. So please get registered. Okay, there's a question from uh, Hema. Uh, Hema's Okay. What is the difference between mock test and simulation? So mock test is, you know, more kind of practice, which you can take many number of times. I think each of the mock tests you can take up to seven times. So four mock tests times seven. And simulation, I guess, you know, there will be only one kind of, uh, you know, uh, questions, one set of questions, uh, Samia, uh, is that right? So that you can, you know, uh, do it as a practice. That would be, you know, very much related to, the the exam simulator, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Kirija is asking, is that uh, offline classes in Pune? Is that you have to tell me. Um, we'll get back to you on this, uh, Girija. I think as of now, as of my idea, no offline classes with where knowledge art is conducting. Any more questions? Sure. Any questions uh, for today? A uh, couple of more seconds, uh, and we if we do not get any questions coming in, and we are good to wrap the session for today. Right. Okay. So your feedback is uh, really uh, you know very important to us. So please use the link once your uh, once the session is ending. You'll be directed to a, a survey form. Please uh, give us your valuable feedback.
Thank you. Thank you for attending, Sujit. Thank you, Anthony. It was really a very insightful session. Thank, thank you so you. much, Sonia. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, thank All you, everyone. Best. And uh, yes, uh, so thank you, Anthony, and uh, cheers, everybody. We'll see you in the next sessions.